Francis will pray for you now. I'm going to pray okay. for you. Okay. We'll all pray for you. And then you're going to push your button on your iPhone, yeah, aren't you? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> because I, I saw them. They are very dangerous. They can come. So I need to fix my time. <laughs> also, prayer also includes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's, here's the deal. How about we pray and then you can push okay, the button? Okay, so, okay. Good. Okay. Thank you. Lord, we thank mm-hmm. you for Helen. We thank you for all that's made it possible for her to be here and for us to celebrate her as a sister in Christ. And I simply Amen. pray, Lord... May she now have the freedom to tell her story, to give you the glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Okay. Because my mentor, he told me, Helen, you, you need to fix your time, otherwise they don't invite you anymore. <laughs> so... I, <laughs> So I'm so happy to be here because it's not about me, it is about you. So some people, they think I'm like kind of super, nothing. Just if you are not here, who can hear my testimony? The only thing I am here just to tell you how God helped me in difficult times. Just I came here to empower you, nothing else. So it's not about me, because some people, they ask me, are you nervous, Helen? Yeah, if I'm speaking about me, I will be nervous, but it's about him. So I'm not nervous. <laughs> so I'm, I'm so happy. Last Wednesday, I have been with um, Trump in White House. Today, I'm in this tent. So I'm so happy with everything what happened in my life. Because he is the one lead me in my life. I received Jesus since I was eight years old because of my grandmother. She's orthodox. Always she is praying. So when I saw her all the time, her life attracted me. Her character, she's still alive. I haven't heard any bad words from her mouth until now. So. It's not hard for me to receive Jesus because of my grandmother. I give picture for my Jesus, just like my grandmother. Also, I have amazing father. So I put uh, God like my dad. So I'm not uh, struggling that much because of my lovely, my dad and my grandmother. So, um, as you know, I have been uh, in prison. So that's why now I will uh, tell you how it looks uh, prison in Eritrea, why um, I have been in prison, how I get uh, released. Because it's come a lot of ideas. If I start to tell you everything, so it take many hours. So, but I need to uh, do it like uh, uh, shorter. Also, the rest you have in the book, uh, it's translated in seven different languages. So, the name of the book, Helen Brahane Nightingale, it is by uh, Holland, uh, French, Germany, it is all kind of seven different languages. So, the rest you can uh, get it in the book. Also, after the service, I'm here around with you, so you can ask me. So, uh, to, to start, uh, uh, as I told you, when I was eight years, I started to attend Orthodox. After that, my dad, he built a new house. We moved there. So, I met an uh, Orthodox priest. He teach me a lot. He built me. So after that, I start reading many books. Because at that time, there are many Ethiopians, they write books, pastors. So also my Bible, all the time. So uh, suddenly, I start asking, who can preach the gospel? Who can preach the gospel? So suddenly, I found out, if somebody not afraid to die, this person can preach the gospel. So I'm like, start preparing myself. So when I open all the time in uh, Romans, uh, in the first, it says, 
uh, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It's the power of God. So just I kind of jump and, okay, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It's the power of God. It's not my power. It is his power. So I start preaching the gospel on the street. Street, I'm a street preacher. So on the cafeteria, in the hospital. So if I am not preaching the gospel, I feel like something is wrong with me. So again, finally, I start read. I don't know why about persecution. How they suffer in Matakambo, or I don't know. So the last book I read about Richard Rumbrand says, Torture for Christ. So I repeat that book by Amharic language. So I found out Christianity, it's not smooth way. It needs preparation. Because Christianity is like when you go first class, second class, third class, it's kind of, you came to 10th grade, 12th grade, so I can feel that. So you can't stand 10 years in one grade. <laughs> so always I'm reading my Bible and preaching the gospel. So when I open my mouth, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, it's the power of God. So the power of God is coming. Because God gave us the power but we have the license to speak about it. So if you don't say nothing, nothing can happen. So when I start preaching the gospel, it's come more power, more knowledge, also boldness. So if God won't use you because he have the power, if you don't move, so he can't do nothing. So I'm not special, but I use my Bible and I start to practice it. That is the difference. So the government, they start arresting me again and again, again and again. So finally the church says, Helen, you need to stop uh, preaching um, on the street because they think it's only uh, for me. But finally they arrest all pastors. They are still uh, in prison. So, uh, after many times, once the government decides only four religious groups in 2002, Orthodox, Catholic, Lutheran, Evangelical Church, Islam. But it's not true. Even the patriarch Orthodox, he's still in prison. So, uh, other activities, they shut down. So, I decide to record CD because People can hear the song inside the house because no church. Church is shut down until now. So when I published that CD and film with one singer, so the title says, the cure for the world is the gospel. Because without gospel, you can't do nothing. You can't lead the country, nothing. So that's why we published that. So the government, they are very angry. Because it is all over, all over, inside the country, outside the country. Because you can't hide God. <laughs> because some people, they want to put him in a small box. But he's fire. <laughs> you fight with fire. So they try, but it goes all over. So they start to follow me. I have been teaching uh, young people, real underground. So they come around 2 a.m., and they beat me in my head or all over. Also, they took all these people from the underground. So they took me to police um, prison. So when I arrived there, there are many women by other case. So because the church is <laughs> shut down for me, like, okay, now there are people here. So I start to tell them about uh, the gospel. Jesus loves you because you become addict for that. If you start preaching the gospel, so if you don't preach, you feel like something is wrong. So I'm happy. So those people, even some of them, they don't know about Jesus. They cry when I'm singing. Just they, they are very happy. Nobody against me. But when they hear me in the night when I'm singing, so they come and they torture me again. So they decide to send me far from the city. So they send me to military prison. 
So when I arrived there, it is very hard to see young people like 20, 22, 25. So instead of getting uh, education, uh, work, married or something, they collect them. So to see as a citizen, just I'm standing there, what's going on here? Also people, they are on the floor, kind of uh, torture. So I ask them, why they are here? You are also prisoner, you need to go inside. So they send me inside. The worst when I go inside, people they deport from Malta. They are very sick because of the torture. So I have been around three weeks without any rest. They are vomiting, you need to clean. So they are shouting, you need to pray. Also one Muslim guy, they put him in a small solitary confinement. So he beat himself, so bleeding all over. So they took him to the corridor. So I came uh, kind of slowly. So I start to sing quietly. So suddenly he's kind of start shouting. So when I up and start to pray for him just in Jesus name, because it's kind of possessed something. But when he shout, all the guards rush to that area. So they say, what can we do with this woman? Because sometimes you think kind of you don't have any power, but when the other people see us, they are amazed. Kind of, what can we do with this woman? I'm only one woman, but all of them, they confuse. Because it's not about me. The power of God is very powerful. So you can't control it. So they say, what are you doing? So I told them, he had been uh, uh, possessed, so we need to release him. Okay, but this guy, he gets <laughs> peace. But for me, <laughs> they say, you need to collect your belongs. So they send me far, more far from uh, the city. Also, other women with me. They are also Christians. I met them in that uh, military prison. So when we arrive in one area, because my uh, PowerPoint, uh, I, I can't use PowerPoint, so you can't see how looks the container, but my email is not working, sorry. So when we arrived there, I saw around 23 metal shipping container. So totally I didn't realize they put us there because I heard when I was young, there was animals, they stay only one night, they die. So I have this kind of thing. So, but when we came closer, we saw a small window. So I, I saw young people, they peer us. So I say, oh, somebody is here. So one guard, he's very aggressive. He came and he opened one container, he pushed us in. So they are small insects, like, like now we uh, we have this jumping all over. It's not clean, the container. So the worst thing, maggots on the floor. Imagine. So those elderly women, I wish if they are young people. Where are the young people? My message is for more for young people. <laughs> you need to tell them. OK. <laughs> So there are a lot of uh, maggots, so there are teenagers, middle-aged, also elderly women. So those elderly women, <gasps> maggots, we are alive? Because maggots, they come when somebody is dying. So it's imagine, so you need to clean these uh, uh, maggots, also they come the next day. It's kind of, they come, I don't know, from uh, the ground. So we are asking, uh, where is the light? So they say, no light. Okay, what about toilet? So he come with one uh, packet. So he put a, inside the container, he says, use this as a toilet. So <laughs> imagine, so we are out of our comfort zone. <laughs> so we, n no privacy. So we use this as a toilet also in the night. It is extremely cold. So some people ask me, what about bed or something? Nothing. <laughs> uh, 
If you are lucky, you have blanket from your family. Otherwise, nothing. So the whole night you are like, because it's, it's hurt. So <laughs> early in the morning, they open this uh, container. So we ask them, what can we do now? All is like military. You need to go out. OK, so you need to carry this uh, bucket. OK, so we go outside. They say toilet, but no toilet. It is open air, <laughs> so all the guards can see you when you use toilet. So for me, just I like quiet and I start medi meditate. What God teach me before it happened in my life. Now I want to tell you, you need to read your Bible properly, because in the exam they give you like this paper, isn't it? Just paper. So, also they give you pen. So you need to feel and to answer the question. So in this exam time, if you don't have the word of God, so the only thing, just you give up and go out. So it's kind of exam. So I start like, okay. Now the situation, it looks, the things I read it before, kind of. So for others, it is very hard. Uh, some of them, they cry the whole night. So we go back after 10 minutes or something to the container. So around 1 o'clock, it's very hot. So all of us sitting in the middle, because you can't lie to the container. It is kind of <laughs> very hot. So just. We are sitting in the middle, also everybody kind of <laughs> looking to me. Because sometimes if you are leader, it's kind of the worst thing. Because sometimes our pastors or leaders, we don't know how they pass through, <laughs> but we think they are super. So all of them, they are like looking to me and they say, Helen, what can we do? So I say, if I mention about Richard Rumran or all this kind of book about persecution, maybe it doesn't give any meaning. So I say, God, you need to give, give me the word. What can I say? Give me the word. So it's come kind of download the words. So it's kind of like um, in uh, Act 16, uh, 26, you can read it in, in your house. Also in uh, Joshua 6, 16. Okay, uh, Philippi 4.4, 4. Act 16.26, Joshua 6.16, 6, uh, uh, Philippi 4.4. 4. But at that time, it has come the, the, the idea to me. So when Paul and Silas, when they put them in prison, they start singing Yamin to God. Imagine, in dark times, they are at that time in the prison, but they are start singing, worshiping God. Also, Jericho, book of Joshua. Jericho, when it fell down, when it collapsed because of the praise. So just I'm kind of download. Also, rejoice to the Lord always in Philippi. I, I love that one. So I told them with full confidence, uh, you know what, what can we do now? We sing. So you can't see their face. Huh? Sing? Yeah, we sing. Because I understand, sometimes in difficult times, yeah, it's not easy to sing. But that is the way. Because that is the way Bible teaches us. So they say, what can we sing? So I told them, thank you for this toilet. <laughs> thank you for cold. Thank you for those maggots. <clears throat> like all of them. Yeah, so we need to thank him about everything, because he gave us life on the cross. So it doesn't matter what is happening around. I'm not only speaking about past. I have also the highest exam in my life now. <laughs> but I don't care what is happening around me, but I worship him because he gave me life. So the enemy have no any power on you, also on me. 
because we are from the king side. We are from the higher side. So for me, as a time to sing, because it's kind of one of the uh, uh, understanding in my life, so I say thank you. It's by Tigrinya. It's hard to uh, understand, but I can uh, give a little bit how it looks. Tamas Gamburlu, Tamas Gamburlu, Tamas Gamburlu, Tamas Gan, Tamas Gamburlu, Tamas Gamburai, Tamas Gambizahli, Tamas Gamburai, Tamas Gan, Tamas Gambizahli, Tamas Gamburlu, Tamas Gamburlu, Tamas Gamburlu, Tamas Gan, Tamas Gamburlu. Tamas gambu wa'i, tamas gambu zahli, tamas gambu wa'i, tamas gan, tamas gambu zahli. So, when we sing this song, the guards are shocked <laughs> because it is 23 metal shipping container. It's full of young people. Even though to hear the song, everybody is quiet because they torture people a lot. It's kind of um, uh, how can you explain hell on the earth? The air is hell on the earth. Everyone is tortured. You see many things around. So song to hear in this dark place for the guards, also for those <laughs> in the prison. So they shock and they come sing. What is what is what are you doing? So just we continue sing until they open the door. So to have a strange sound, they open this um, metal container. So they start to beat us. So what they do, they separate us into two. Because I understand when they beat you once by this uh, police stick, you feel fire in your body. So only four or five uh, girls, we say, we can't stop singing. So all of them, they go back to uh, container. We have been around one month. They ask you to carry stones. They ask you to roll on the floor. I don't know. They have different kind of uh, torture. They try everything. So in the night, we are outside with the chain. So sometimes it's rain, so you get cold all the time. But just we stand by faith. So finally, they are like, uh, is, we are, what kind of people are the human being? Kind of give them <laughs> something. So they say, you need to stop singing. No, we can't stop singing, but we don't disturb others. All of us, we say the same word. So they send us back to uh, container. So they say, okay, you can sing, but uh, quietly. So I have been in this metal shipping container for 32 months. Always I'm singing, singing, singing. Because if you break it once, so it doesn't continue. But the other thing I'm preaching every day for those fellow prisoners with me, they are all of them women. Also, I send four, five letters to this 23 metal uh, shipping container. So once they found a letter, they shock. So they beat me a lot outside until the stick broke into small pieces. So I stayed the whole uh, evening. So I thought they sent me back to container. I'm kind of waiting until 10 o'clock in the night. So they asked me to move to other uh, container without any blanket, nothing, nothing. So I understand how cold is. <laughs> Hard. Even now I'm li living in Denmark, but we have very good jackets, so you don't get cold. But this kind of freezing is, yeah, I have no word for that. But in the middle of this situation, also they chain me. So even I can't see what, what is going on around me. So I start singing. God gave me new song, imagine. New song, because they told me, sing uh, quietly, isn't it? But when the exam comes more, you don't need to uh, sing quiet. 
because Jericho fall down because of the shout loudly, isn't it? So at that time, not, not sing quietly, I'm singing loud, 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 loud. All the prisoners can hear. So they told me, you need to stop, you need to stop. No. I, I need to shout because when Moses, he lifted his hand, they win, isn't it? Also, when in Jericho collapsed because they shout, shout. So sometimes you need to shout, not to cry, <laughs> to shout. So the things around you can collapse. So I am singing the whole night. So around five o'clock, <laughs> even I can't sing anymore. I'm freezing, so I can't move my mouth, also my foot, everything. I feel like uh, something. So they opened this uh, container. They told me, uh, good morning. So I told them, good morning. How are you? I'm fine. <laughs> so they say, now we, we need to ask you for interview. So I told them, no, not now. I need to get some heat. Do you know why I am asking heat? Because when they interview, when they take you to the interview, so you have opportunity to preach the gospel. So if I'm collapsed, so I can't say anything. So I told them, I need heat. Okay, so they put me outside. I get some heat. So are you ready now? Yes. So I start tell them about the gospel. So like, Helen, do you want to teach us? Even you didn't know if we are Muslim or Christian, what kind of a person are you? No. Just gospel is for everybody. For everybody need gospel. So I have been kind of, it's come boldness. When you are in difficult times, so God's grace is all over. The presence of God is all over. Sometimes it's hard for them to speak with me because they say, oh, some, something, she's something. She looks one, but I, I don't know, she's like thousands of people. So it's kind of too much fear in that area because if God is with us, so yeah, we, we don't need to afraid because he's the one um, taking over for everything. So finally they say, now we put you in solitary uh, confinement. So I have been for around four months in a solitary like container with, uh, alone. But at that time, I have been doing many activities. So you can, you can read the book because it uh, takes time. But if you ask me, Helen, what is hard from this, all this kind of torture? Because torture is like uh, every day kind of. They took you outside because I'm preaching. They took me outside because I'm praying. Because we pray three times in the day, three times in the night. So torture is like always. But the hard thing, if I tell you, once they told me, Helen, you need to sign to um, deny your faith. So I told them, no, I can't do that. The reason I'm here, because I'm preaching the gospel, I keep my faith. So they say, so now you need to collect your belongs. Okay. So they moved me another container. So I met one woman. She have a mental illness. So finally they, they told us uh, it's kind of cancer in her brain. I don't know. But she had been in the U.S. 23 years. So they put me with her. She's shouting all the time, shouting. She's very huge. Also, she beat me. So imagine in one container with mental ill person. I have been praying for her, but sometimes we don't know. Some people get healed, some people not. So it's not, uh, I can't say anything about that. I wish if she get healed because she had been also tortured because she's shouting. So to see her sick and tortured, it is the worst thing. So with this woman, when I start eating, she uh, kick the food and uh, push it. So I have been kind of very thin. I lost a lot of weight. 
So the guard starts kind of uh, laughing. Helen, maybe now you are 12 kilo. But if you ask me, even though I look bad outside at that time, but inside I'm stronger because of the word of God. So uh, I stay with this lady for 10 months. Imagine. So once I ask, because she pulled my hair, also she tried to kill me. So I say, um, God, I know everything is for good. <laughs> but <laughs> what, what, what is this? Yeah, I'm just asking what's going on. Because always I don't say to God, why it has happened, why it has happened. Because if somebody died on the cross because of love, I didn't think so it was a good idea to ask him why, 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 why. Because he know what he's doing. Also, he know me more than I know myself. <laughs> so it's kind of silly to ask this kind of question. But God, you say everything is for good. But uh, what can I learn from this? She pulled my hair all the time. She beat me. So it reminds me the word of God. Do you remember Abraham? He traveled from Philistine to Moria to sacrifice his own son. Okay? He didn't change the first day. What about the next day? What about the third day? To sacrifice him, his own son from Philistine to Moria. So I say, okay. So it doesn't matter. I follow my father's foot. If she pull my hair, if she do everything, so just I keep silent, just I say, doesn't matter what happened, but I need to stand by faith. Because sometimes the exam can push you out. But the only thing you need to focus. My message is, when you are in exam time, you don't go outside, drink coffee, or isn't it? I don't know. If you are in exam time, people, they stay home and read and go to the library or something. So in Christianity, when it has come high exam in life, you need to focus. The only thing I'm success in, uh, in my Christian life, I'm very focused. Imagine, no food in that area. So we have been fasting a lot. <laughs> Imagine, to be focused, because we are in the exam, so we don't need to kind of cry or to think about the problem. We have been reading, also we wake up in the night praying, praying. So always, if the situation is hard for you, so don't run, <laughs> because you come again to the exam. If you quit 10th grade, it is there. <laughs> so if you want to start continue your education, you need to go to 10th grade. So the only thing you can do is just stand and reading your Bible and worship. So when you pass the exam, you, you can't repeat the exam. By other way, for example, David, when he killed Goliath, it's easy because kind of he beat him by the name of Jesus, you can call it. But the weird thing, the worst thing is his own son, Abesolom, he sleeps with their concubites, which means with their wives. Imagine, it's kind, this kind of exam is the hardest, isn't it? So in Christianity, you, are, you can't stand in once. To kill Goliath is easy. But always, it's come more higher, 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 higher. So people, they love to be famous or to be in the pulpit, but they, they, want, they didn't know how the people come to the pulpit. So if I'm not past the exam, do you think I have kind of confidence to stand here to tell you about persecution? No, because I passed the exam, so I have confidence to encourage others. So it doesn't matter what's happened, maybe in your marriage, in your workplace, doesn't matter. The exam, it helps you to go more higher, to the higher level. But we think, oh, I have no children, but my friend, she has four children, blah, blah, blah. Sometimes we are 
too much because he know. <laughs> so the only thing, accept what you have and just think about today, not about tomorrow. Sometimes we worry a lot about tomorrow. So today <laughs> we depress and we think, <laughs> just we forget about today. So always when I wake up in the morning, thank you, Jesus, you gave me this new day. So I, I need to do it kind of special and speak with you and new revelation. So you need to start your day. Because we don't know about tomorrow. Even we don't know about half an hour. But the enemy always, oh, when you are pension, what can you do? Many people, they won't serve God, but they're afraid. So when they get pension, so no money. Imagine. <laughs> God have everything. So just avoid fear. So I start preaching, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but finally after uh, 10 months, I don't know how they took her outside. I didn't think so she's alive because she had been very ill. But for me, they send me uh, back to other uh, container. So I, I start teaching guards. I told you, Christianity, it's not to stand in one because always I'm sending four or five letters for prisoners. So now I'm the other level. So there are many guards, they start reading Bible. So they, when they found one letter, they are very angry. So they ask me, to sit in the middle of uh, dirt. So they told me, Helen, where is your Bible? Because at that time, I have been two years. So when they saw this letter, how do you remember? Where is your Bible? So I told them, I have no any Bible. How do you remember this? It's in my mind. Ah, okay. If it is in your mind, so they beat me a lot in my head, which means to remove the no knowledge of God. Because they put you in this metal shipping container. I know many people, they forget even the, their birth date. The metal have something. Also, some people, they uh, get confused or something. So that's why they put you in this metal shipping container. So for them, after two years, it's two pages <laughs> with a lot of scripture. They shock. So... They, uh, I feel dizzy because they beat me a lot in, in my head. Finally, they say, just uh, go inside because all this container, they shout, they shout a lot. So they send me back. The whole night, it's heavy uh, headache. Also, in the morning, they took me far from the metal container for torture. It's kind of heavy torture. They start from here all your body until the, your body start to uh, change to red and blue. So kind of start to shake my, my body by itself. So they give me five minutes break, torture, five minutes break. So finally he says, Helen, you need to stop saying Jesus. So I told him, no, in one head, only one mouth. I accept him until death. Brothers and sisters, if it is close to me also now, this, I will do it. Because I'm not afraid to this. Because when you accept Jesus, so there is persecution. It can take your life. So if you are ready for that, so at that time or now, I don't know. So just I told him, yeah, I accept him until this. So when I say that, he tortured me more countless. So finally, I'm not shouting. He's the one shouting when he beat me. So he says, Helen, what do you think? Yeah, you did your job. I'm done my job. We are doing fine. So he shocked. He called the guard. But at that time, why I'm saying that, I, I feel no hatred for this guy. For me, it's hard to believe because always when I read about um, Stephen, when they torture him, he says, they don't know what they are doing, forgive them. Doesn't give any meaning when I was young to read that. Also, Jesus himself, he says, 
They don't know what they are doing. Forgive them. How? But at that moment, when I saw this guy, so I don't, I don't feel any hatred. So I told him, yeah, you did your job. I'm done my job. So we are, we are doing fine. Always I'm waiting this guy will come to Jesus one day. Always. This is my expectation, not hatred. So I can feel it's come forgiveness. It's kind of grace. You can't do it by your flesh. Nothing. That's why now I'm standing. Don't worry. When you are in high exam, there is grace. It looks kind of film when I'm speaking, but it's real. The Bible is real. So that just kind of practice it. So finally, he sent me to uh, one guard. At that time, I can't carry any kind of chain. So I remember this woman, she's still in prison. She's also in my book. Imagine, now I'm 11 years in Denmark. She's still in prison. So she had been close to me. I told her, uh, today, I think I'm pass away. What do you say? Yeah, just you need to call the guard because I, can, I feel it's easy to speak about it. It is hard to pass through it. So I can feel, yeah, I'm close to, to death. So she called the guard. I remember when he came close to me. After that, I don't remember anything. The only I found out, she's the one tell me, Helen, they come and they check you. So they say she's passed away. So you can hear her voice is shouting for long. So I don't know, brothers and sisters, I'm alive because to tell you this, but I'm not special. There are many friends, they die. The same torture, but they die. Also, they are still all our pastors, they are still in prison, more than 14 years now. Imagine. So just the, the reason I'm here to encourage you, plus, to remind you, those people, they are still in prison. Just pray for them. I'm the voice for those voiceless. If I'm passed away, I didn't think so. Who can be voice? God have ma many voice, but I'm happy. I'm go around and engaging people with persecution. So I love you so much. My story is very long, but I'm here. You can ask me. Also, read the small book. My, Number two is on the way <laughs> because it's a long story. You can't put it in this small book. Thank you very much. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Helen. You're welcome. Helen, um, you've modeled to us a holy boldness. Amen. And it was put in you at a very young age and then came the exams, and the exams, and the exams, and you have been tested to a very high level. Amen. I'm going to ask everyone to sit down, please. And now, if there's anyone here who aspires to something of that boldness, would you stand, and I want to ask Helen to pray for you. Would you do that? But if you want boldness, if you've tasted something or heard something tonight, and you think, I'm up for that. Just stand and I'll ask Helen to pray for you. Amen. Okay. These people who are standing say they want something of what God has put Amen. in you. Would Amen. you pray for us? Amen. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Just prepare your heart. He is here. <laughs> the glory of Holy Ghost is here. Mm. Just the only thing just you need to receive. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
I ask you for boldness, Holy Spirit. They can preach the gospel without fear in the name of Jesus. I declare in their life, Holy Ghost, touch each and everyone in this room. Holy Ghost, those people need power to preach the gospel, to save the generation in the name of Jesus. I pray fear in the name of Jesus. I break it now, today, in the name of Jesus. Any fear, any fear, any bondage, in the name of Jesus, fear in the name of Jesus from this room. Any fear spirit, I break it right now. Fear for life, fear for the family, fear to preach the gospel, fear to die. I break it in the name of Jesus. What consume others not consume you. What consume those people throwing inside the fire for Sidrach, Misak, Abdenego, they try to throw them inside the fire, but doesn't consume them, but consume others, but not consume you. You are the chosen generation. Just receive it in the name of Jesus. A thousand in your side, 10,000 in your right, hand but doesn't come to you be courageous in the name of jesus i declare the word of god in each and everyone in this room in the name of jesus i break fear in the name of jesus give them boldness holy spirit as paul says i'm not ashamed of the gospel it's the power of god in the name of jesus i put the power of god inside of them in the name of jesus this testimony, Holy Spirit, to change many people's life in the name of Jesus. Speak to them, Holy Ghost. Speak to their life in the name of Jesus. Speak to their heart in the name of Jesus. Move them today in the name of Jesus. To stand by faith in this country, in every Europe, in the name of Jesus. I break any fear, Spirit. Holy Spirit. You are mighty God. Show them, Holy Spirit, how you are powerful. Tell them you know them more than they know themselves in the name of Jesus. Give them joy in the name of Jesus. Inside joy, hallelujah. As Paul says, rejoice to the Lord always. But at that time he had been in prison. He mentioned it for those outside in the name of Jesus. Joy. Joy, joy, joy in each and every one in this room. Joy in the name of Jesus. Peace in the name of Jesus. Peace of God in the name of Jesus. I release it in the name of Jesus. Speak to them, Holy Spirit. They can start singing new song in the name of Jesus. They can worship you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus, for this Shekinah glory in this area. We give you Praise. Thank you for everyone, each and everyone in this room. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen.